I only specialize in what I call the really great bubbles. What is going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. Fun show for you today. We have to cover the S&P 500, the Russell, the NASDAQ, the metals. Happy belated Valentine's Day to everybody. Have the pink shirt on for you. Guys, lots to cover. This video is going to be brought to you by SimpleFX. If you've been on the fence thinking about joining our Market Makers Discord, where we have live streams, trade signals, TA, and best of all, community with like-minded individuals, well, now's your chance to get a free month. Simple will pay for your first month. If you want to download Simple FX, sign up, message Lee. The telegram is in the video description. All those spam comments that I spend hours after every single video deleting with WhatsApps and stuff, guys, those are spam. Those are fake. Our official telegram is listed in the video description. Download Simple. Contact Lee. He will get you set up. Here's a pro tip for you. You need a paid VPN. The free VPNs do not work. Use your, uh, use your McAfee, your Viper VPN, Express, Nord. I'm trying to work out a deal so I can get you guys a discount on VPNs. They're going to become a necessity. Trust me, it's always important to protect your privacy, but as you guys know, different countries are cracking down with compliance and regulations. So if you want to try out Simple, you can trade all these assets as a decentralized exchange, and you can get up to a $5,000 instant bonus. No games, guys. There's no uh, volume requirements, no rolling over your trades. It's instant based on your deposit. All that good in intel is in the video description. Let's go ahead and check this out. Let's go to the S&P, guys. That's Richard Wyckoff on my um, on my thumbnail. Lots of people ask about my trading style, and I guess I would best describe it as a hybrid between advanced Fibonacci concepts, geometric concepts, and Wyckoff. Okay, that's basically my trading style. You guys that watch the channel, I think most people can glean some very useful tips, maybe some different strategies, different ways to look at the markets, and I think that's why the channel has become such a success. So definitely like and subscribe and tick the notification bell. But let's go ahead and look at this. So. So we have our uh, S&P 500 on the three day chart. You can see our Wyckoff range that we've established. We have our up thrust through the range, our failed pivot. We have our down thrust and then the signs of strength afterwards. And of course we have the trend line from the all time high. And then we have this price action right here currently on the three day chart. Up thrust outside the range, signs of weakness, up thrust again, weakness again. What is this right here? So are we accumulating to break out to the upside? I've showed you guys different ways to look at this. I want to show you another way. I have a video out there on YouTube. It's free. You can watch it. It is how to use the GAN fan. Uh, Wyckoff was a big proponent of using the 45 degree angle. The problem on TradingView, as you guys know, is you have to either lock your scale or you have to understand where to put your GAN fan. So this method, I'm gonna show you this right now, but watch the video because I'm gonna do this very quickly. This method, you use a quarter angle, okay? One slash four right here, and I'm gonna put that on that first impulse, impulsive move down, okay? That's your first impulsive move down. Remember we used a trend-based FIB, looking for that big move down after the 20% retracement. This is where we land it, which landed you in the bear market here, your attempt to defeat it price fell down. Going to match that up with the 1-4 angle. Look at your 1-1 one, one angle. This is your 45. Look what price is doing. Sitting right on the 45. Now, WD Gann was friends with Richard Wyckoff as well as Charles Dow and Jesse Livermore. Think about that for a trading group of friends. Jesse Livermore, first billionaire trader. Wyckoff knew everybody who was to know in the trading world. But the 45 is bullish above, bearish below. And you're just writing the 45 here. Okay, so here's your trend line that everybody has on TV. But their 45 is more important right here because this is what you're writing on. So you are either going to continue to break down, get below this 45 five angle or you're going to break out up to the upside and move up to our 4300 target right and price right now is undecided but let's look at some other indicators some different ways lots of people have lots of indicators but don't really know how to use them Donchian channels came from Richard Donchian the godfather of trend trading just wanted to show you this because if you look at your Donchian look at the top of the Donchian 4307 right here's a zigzag line showing resistance you can see how accurately that's working as well but 4300 is the top of your channel and if we go ahead and do this with fibs as you guys have seen me do 
as well. Looking at this bullish Gartley structure here, but we'll go ahead and use a trend-based fib. Going to use the impulse, which is the October 3rd candle, okay? And I'm going to come up to this swing high, the November 30th candle, and then come down to the low here, the Wednesday, December 21st candle. And you can see the 786 at 4187, right on top of your Wyckoff, which is at 4170. It's giving you very strong resistance, right? So this is where you're hitting your head. This is where price is struggling. And we did have a pivot we're going to look at in the daily time frame. This yellow line here is when that bottoming action could happen in the S&P if this decides to continue to roll down, which is that April 14th date we talked about last video. So you have you have Fibonacci resistance here. You have the 45 angle that you're just hovering on to try to stay bullish. You guys have seen the volume profile here as well. You have peak volume resistance in the range going all the way back to the all-time high. This is why you're struggling here. And on top of that, let's just look at the Welkin volume. Guys, this is a Wyckoff indicator uh, for volume. It's called Welkin volume study that shows you the strength of the mood with sigmas, which are basically standard deviations, and you have low volume. Okay, This is why you're stuck where you're stuck, and you need some type of catalyst. Either this is going to start to erode and fall down, or you need to break out above that 4187. I'll call it 4180. Break out above hold this line and then move up to your one fib which is a symmetrical move at 4303 could you get overspill if you had a bullish catalyst towards 4400 yeah of course you could look at the volume resistance it's all up here in this range okay so that 4300 4374 that's where i'm really looking at price if it wants to turn bullish to move out the problem is you have to get people into the market the problem is four of the biggest investment banks chief equity strategists are all telling their clients the market's going down to the low 3000s and they should not be long right now. I'm talking about Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley, uh, Marco Kalanovic from JP Morgan, probably the biggest bank. Uh, you have Mohammed at Citibank and Savita at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. So you have these chief equity strategists that are all advising, hey, that's not enough risk reward to go long here. And price is just kind of stuck because you also have retail that wants this to move up, right? The natural bullish bias of the market is always to try to make it move up. So like I told you before, the way I think this is going to play out on this... Um, on the S&P, there's it's just a it's a matter of variables, okay? If we pivot out and come out to the upside, this is our move to get to that 4300, okay? We have to do that move. We have to gain strength. But and what we're doing in the daily time frame, which we'll look at in a minute, is printing a double top because you keep getting rejected at the same trend line, okay? So this is going to play out a couple of different ways. I've showed you this pattern, so I'm just going to draw it quickly. And uh, this is our pattern here from the November 30th candle down to that swing low. This is your one spot 272 with your 786, okay? Coming back down to the downside, roughly right somewhere like here, 783, okay? This is your retest of the trend line. That's your first move. This gets you back to that trend line that's been responsible for your tops all the way back to the all-time high, okay? And when that happens, when price comes down, if it holds that trend line and moves up, makes a lower high, on a large time frame, you're just making another double top or perhaps even a head and shoulders. You see that? This could be a shoulder here. And then if this broke down, you're going lower, guys, and that's your march to come down and try to make your bottom for that April 14th date, right? If this does pivot back out to the upside and defeats this Wyckoff trading range, 4180, and come out and pivot up, then that's your march up to the 4300, let's say 4300 to 4375. And that, I do believe, will be your high for the year. I don't think the market will ever defeat that. Again, the idea that everything's going to get worse as time goes by, I expect profits to be down even more in the next quarter print. That's just, that's my perspective of the market, guys. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. It's just slow. It's laggy. You have to understand the unemployment number itself is shows peak cycle. You have 50-year lows in unemployment. So if you're at the 50-year low, what's coming next? 
economy is in decay, unemployment's going to start to tick up, but it takes time. Okay, and what happened yesterday? The CPI number came in at six spot four, guys. That's a hot CPI. It's not super hot, but the street was expecting six spot two. The Fed projected six spot three five, so it came in above everybody at six spot four. Inflation still is very strong, and this is what the pundits on TV don't understand unless you study the 1970s or read extensively works by like economists such as Milton Friedman. Inflation moves in waves. It's easy to get peak inflation down to a certain level, but then it gets sticky. And remember, inflation is cumulative. So when they talk about getting pushback, like Walmart pushing back on its vendors to try to lower prices, what's the incentive? Because every single month, inflation is still accelerating. It's just been decelerating in the acceleration, but things are still getting more expensive. You actually have to have deflation to bring price down. In other words, let's say I hear people on TV saying, well, what about just getting down to 3% inflation? That'd be okay too. Well, what's the incentive to bring down food prices, which are up 20 to 30%, depending on which items you're looking at? How are you going to bring something that's up 20% down to say negative to get rid of that 20% markup? Are you going to do that by having cumulative 3% inflation every year? No, there's zero incentive to bring down the prices. And that's the problem. And that weakens the consumer over time, okay? And as the consumer gets weaker with a trillion dollars in credit card debt, that's when you start to see things ro roll over. So that's the economic picture, but really on the price action picture, you are at near peak resistance here. Obviously that 4180, 4195 is excellent resistance, but if you can break above it, that's where you have the ability to get to. Let's look at this on the MFI as well and see what we're doing on the three-day chart. Three-day chart, we're moving up to the highest level in the MFI since, I mean, well, all the way back to 2020, okay? 2020 was the last time we actually got overbought on the three-day chart. On the actual signal area, we had this trend line that's been in effect for years, providing you your tops and the money flow, but you're actually moving up to the overbought area. So again, if we do move up, this would be an excellent signal, and what a monster short to come up to that market symmetrical target. I would absolutely love that. All right, guys, so the other pattern I wanna show you here on the three-day chart, and then we're gonna speed through this because I have the other charts drawn out for you. Let's look at a larger triangle pattern, okay? A larger triangle pattern with a projection. And so we can do that like this. We can take our impulsive leg down here. You see this? Here's our impulsive leg down. And now we're gonna skip tagging this Gartley structure midpoint high, come all the way out to here, okay, the swing high. That is your January 31st candle. Now looking at that ratio, eight to nine, it's close to 786. This is going to be about a one spot 272, a little bit over spill. And let's look at this. I want to show you this on the daily. We take our trend based fib, go from point A to point B, up to point C. Okay. And then we're looking at the one fib for a market some symmetry move here at 3428. Now, if this is, if we did have our pivot and we are moving down from here, okay, if this starts breaking down and moving down towards the April 14th date, then this is what you're looking at as a 3428. And I'm really looking at the 1272 for that 3220 because in the larger ABC projection, I had 3141. So somewhere between 3428, 3220, maybe we'll see some better uh, guidance when we have more candles. We have to see how we react if we do descend to the trend line and make a lower high. So we'll be able to look at some other methods, but that's what I'm looking at. And fast forwarding this same pattern here on the daily time frame, guys, this is where you land. April 14th on the daily time frame. Now, this pivots, these pivots here in yellow, remember I went over this the last video. So this is 42 bars between key vibrational pivot points. Here's your high, here's your low. Here's your high, and then you went to another high. It's not a high-low pattern, it's a vibrational pivot pattern, okay? So you have pivots. Remember what vibration is. Vibration is the meeting of price and time where price will pivot. Now we just hit that we hit that point yesterday. If this pattern is true, 42 bars, 43 bars, 43 bars, projected out 43 bars. So that was yesterday. And of course, price almost made a new high. It got up to 41.75 and needed to defeat 41.95. And then we are down. We only have one day candle here. But if this downtrend continues, this pattern would project 
project the S&P by April 14th coming down to that 3428 level. And as you can see here on the daily time frame, you're printing a clean double top, okay? We have to make break that resistance of Wyckoff on the three-day chart, and you can draw it on the daily, but I want you guys to see this pattern. So this is what I'm looking at for a projection. And looking at the money flow, you just cross in the bearish territory as well. But again, we need some type of catalyst because we're just chopping along. Either buyers are going to dry up, big money will start selling, or big money will step in, the buying programs will step in and start moving the price up, which let's look at the VIX. I mean, the VIX is dropping again. We got back above the 50. So this is your fear gauge. So fear is coming down again, okay? So you could see that push on price to move price up higher. Let's go ahead and look at this on the eight hour chart. Just again, I just threw a simple trend line across the top. You can see how the wicks are getting above, the bodies are staying below. You're in this descending pattern right here on the daily time frame, printing a double top. Let's go ahead and look at the Russell. Russell, we can go ahead and put this in Wyckoff as well. Come to our buying climax here, selling here. Oh, I missed the wick here. And I want to show you on the Russell what this is doing because what you have happening on the S&P, as you know, you're struggling with your resistance. The Russell is more parabolic, which is why it tracks closer to Bitcoin as well. But look what you did. You broke out. Okay, so this is what you wanted to see. You had your pullback. So you have your pivot up. You have your pullback. This is your Livermore pivot. You want to hold this base here of 1908. If you can hold this base and pivot to the upside, there is more upside because you got above resistance. What happened over here? You got above your key resistance but you lost your pivot you came back retested it and then fell down okay so this is going to repeat one of these two ways you have the exact same pattern you're on top of your resistance and again what's the trigger for this well the s p is going to have to move the s p is the broader market the russell is small caps the s p needs to move and then the russell is in position to move up and if we look at this from our trend based fib, per fib perspective as well we can do this. You can see that 1988, again, was our key level on the Russell. We have that pattern. And if we have draw the downside pattern here as well, just like we did on the S&P, our larger triangle structure here, doing this, 946. Remember, this is almost a 100% symmetrical move, but I think this would go much deeper. So let's look at this, take our trend-based FIB from A to B to C. This would call for you to return to 1615 by that April 12th date. Let's get this out to April. It'd be April 14th on the daily chart. And I'm looking specifically at the 1272 at 1507 and the poten potentially the 1618 even because the Russell moves much more parabolically than the S&P. Let's go ahead and let me show you guys my trend-based FIB settings. Lots of people were asking about that as well. Oh, it's behind my picture. I didn't see it. So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. So the 1618 would take you down to 1371, and the 1272 would take you to 1507 if we decide to lose this Wyckoff range and descend. The fibs that I use, guys, are 382, 486. 486 and 786 and 1272 are Kepler's triangle. Kepler was a uh, German astronomer, discovered that the uh, Earth and planets move around the sun in an elliptical orbit. But in the trading world, he's famous for Kepler's triangle, which is the marriage of Pythagoras with the golden ratio, okay? So Kepler's triangle is the golden triangle. Anyways, these are the key ratios. These ratios are found in the pyramids, for example, like the Pyramid of Giza. 486, 786, 1272. If I need more FIB targets, I'll add the 707, which is a sacred slice, and then it's reciprocal ratio, the 1414, okay? But in general, this is my FIB setup. 386, 46, 618, 786, 1, 1618, 1272. That's what I will roll with on that. So this is what I'm looking at here on the Russell. Again, volume is low, trying to hold this key support area. Looking at this on the three-day chart, again, based on your trend line, you are overbought. Let's look at this on the daily time frame. 
daily time frame as you guys know the smaller pattern hit beautifully excellent price descension as you can see on the daily guys double top right just like the s p on the daily you're forming a double top this is your high and then the, your lower high here's your high here's your lower high for now but the russell on that three-day chart this is why it's always good to zoom out i like three-day charts because you get more candles in the weekly chart okay this is why it's always good to zoom out because on that three-day chart if you can break out, defeat this previous high, that's your pivot out to the upside where you can look at your upside targets, potentially of 2062 would be your next landing point for the Russell, if it can do that. If not, if that pivot holds true on the S&P and it's a descent from here, then you're going to be looking to the downside, okay? And let's do let's go ahead and get those downside targets as well. I told you before, you can use fibs going up or down, right? You can use them at, because previous resistance is support. Lots of people, including myself, like to lay out new fibs. You can take a trend-based fib on a double top like this, assuming that's the high, from your swing high to your swing low to that current swing high and look how the fibs basically stack on top of each other. Some of them are right on top of each other. So that's just something you guys can see, but I do like to get fresh fib projections. Your 618, 1891. Remember losing 1908 puts you back into the Wyckoff trading range. So you wanna watch 1891 for the 618, 786, 1873, and the symmetrical move is 1849 for this pattern to come down to and then get a nice bounce, okay? Get a nice bounce, maybe make, make another lower high or start returning back to the top of the trading range. But 1849 will be a key level. And let's go ahead and bounce over to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is already in its Wyckoff trading range. You can see how beautiful this played out as well. This is 12,718 here. You got wicks above, and now you're just doing what the S&P is doing. You're struggling beneath the trading range, right? We looked at volume and everything. The NASDAQ did not get up to that level. But let's go ahead and pull the triangle on this. And again, we're going to just bypass the midpoint, go straight to the swing, because I want to look at a larger pattern, okay? This is your 749, so this will be close to your 786. We'll put this out to April 12th to be consistent with all of them. So this would be 1272 would be your reciprocal. And let's see how close I get that. And let's take the trend base fib from the A to the B, up to the C. And 95.98 would be your reciprocal move where I would have the NASDAQ coming down to if the descent continues, okay? You need the descent to continue, obviously. So always be, regardless of what your macro view is as a trader, you guys know macro view, very bearish on the year, but you gotta be able to understand where you could go, the steps needed to break out to the upside, okay? Because if, the, if they're going to push the S&P to 4,300, now's a good opportunity to do it, but they need that catalyst. If they don't, you're going to come retest that trend line. Everything will pull down with it. And then that next bounce is absolutely critical to see if we get to that 4,300 or if we fall apart with a lower high. And the NASDAQ and the Russell are going to follow suit with that as well. Average volume, but the overall volume is extremely low compared to the previous volume bars. Looking at the Russell, you're pro I mean the Nasdaq, you're approaching overbought on the three-day chart. The actual 90-10 line here on the three-day chart. The closest you got to that was back in July of 2021, on your way to your all-time high. Okay, so years. So this will be an excellent if you just keep ranging here and the MFI starts going overbought and all these indicators, and we had that pivot, it's just more confluence for me. To, to assume that we're going to continue our descent, okay? Let's go ahead and look at this on the daily. Daily, pull that trend base fib as you can see. I just went over those numbers. The 200 is down there right at the one fib at 11,948. Lots of algos, we'll be watching that again. Key retest area if the NASDAQ does come down here to test 11,948 with the 200, how it reacts when it when it hits it. Does it fall below for resistance or does it hold it as support? Looking at the MFI here, again, bearish on the daily time frame below the median line. We had the bearish divergence on the pump. That's the problem with low volume. And that's where we're at 
on all of the indices, guys. Let's go ahead and look at gold. Gold is a beautiful trade. Went ahead and colored my triangles in so you guys could see this a little bit better if the contrast. And again, gold is down 6 spot, 6.6% 6 right now. Uh-oh, some numerology in the market. But uh, the one fib, the reciprocal move has you at 16.46. I went ahead and put the landing date for April 12th on the three-day chart. Again, remember the gold, gold and silver will do a mini crash cycle and then recover quicker. But initially, because I don't have a particular projection, although you can look at projections here as well. Let me show you guys this. I didn't mean for this video to go this long, but let's look at this. So if we look at this down move, again, I'm looking at the impulsive move down here. So point A to the bottom, 21 bars. You see that? So this is called sequencing. And, and this is particularly useful when you get Fibonacci numbers out of it too. But you know, in geometric trading, you're always looking for powers of numbers, doubling, tripling uh, of numbers as well. And if you look at the upswing, 41 bars, almost a doubling of 21 bars. So what's interesting is on the downside, if we do come out to that April 14th date, which is the April 12th candle here, 24 bars. So you start looking at a plus or minus of three days for these moves, right? So you have a 21 bar downswing, a 41 bar upswing. The next downswing could be 24 bars. So you could be plus or minus three days, which again is just one single candle here on a three day chart if the downtrend continues for the S&P. This is called sequencing. So let's go ahead and look at silver. Silver, also awesome trade. It's over 13% in profit now, guys. Looking for silver to come down to 1564 uh, at the one fib. But again, I use the same date just because that makes sense for now to use that date. Then these metals will recover. You have the you have the markets recover and then that's the key test of whether or not they continue to go up or fall apart. Silver was way overbought on the 3-day chart had massive move or gold, I'm sorry. Gold was way overbought in the 3-day chart had massive moves. The last couple of times it's been overbought like this. So, I anticipate this coming down even further. It's of course it's going to retrace price moves in waves. You get shapes, you get double tops, you get you know, just head and shoulders whatever, but in general this is going to descend with the marketplace and that's what they're missing on the YouTube metal channels they don't understand the cycle that we are trading in all right guys a little bit long I was trying to do this fast but I want to share some information with you so hope you guys enjoy the video Bitcoin video will be out tomorrow and uh, I'll talk to you guys then take care everybody